So it turns out having the stones to do something isn't just a metaphor. Without the right minerals, like magnesium, your testosterone and your drive start slipping. So let's examine why magnesium might be a big piece or the big piece in you not being able to produce the testosterone that you want it to be. Let's take a look at some research here and just drive this point home a little bit first with the effects of magnesium supplementation on testosterone levels of athletes and sedentary subjects. This is why I point this out that it doesn't matter whether you are, well, it does matter if you're uh, getting exercise or not. But the interesting thing is, is that there is uh, an increase in total, a free and total testosterone when they supplement magnesium it's just higher in those who exercise than in sedentary individuals. So either way, you're going to get benefit, which is great. What I wish I knew about this uh, study is what form. And I'm going to talk about that at the end, why that is so important. But let's also look here about some of the things that can give us an idea as to whether or not we have enough magnesium. And this is actually uh, from Mayo Clinic. And are you low but do not know? There are a lot of symptoms. And so they're talking about uh, this woman, it could be high blood pressure, high blood sugar, headaches, muscle cramping, anxiety, trouble sleeping. Those are pretty commonly associated with not having enough of that. But what I like to point out here is they're talking about the risk factors. She eats an American diet, okay? Most American diets are gonna be low in magnesium, the commonly depleted. She's also taking a medication, hydrochlorothiazide, which is common. So we think of these blood pressure medications as possibly lowering potassium, but also magnesium. And here's the big one, guys, that probably a lot of us need to be mindful of is drinking alcohol. Even socially puts the heart at risk of magnesium deficiency. Now, this um, is not to say that uh, you know, you got to stop watching now because, oh, I'm going to drink alcohol. No, just a, a reminder that if you do or when you do, make sure that you're replacing the magnesium on those days that you do that. And that's kind of one of the things I've built into my lifestyle to do that. So there's a lot of things that could be leading to this uh, digestive issues, you know, taking like an acid stopping medication, PPIs. But the foods I'm going to get into next. But before I do that, this part here is very important. Why can't you just check magnesium blood levels? This is trickier than you might think. And of course, this is Mayo saying this. A blood test of magnesium may not provide a helpful answer. Magnesium is a charged mineral in the body and resides primarily inside the cell. This is a very important point because I get this question a lot. How do I know if I'm low? We have to ask a lot of questions and really get to know our body and check in on our diet because we can't necessarily just take a blood test and know if we're going to be having enough of the magnesium. So what I did is I looked at some foods. It's, if you're eating these foods, you're probably doing a pretty good job. This is uh, from the United States Department of Agriculture, and they're showing the amount of foods that have the most magnesium at the top. Pumpkin seeds. I say it one time. I'll say it probably every day of my life. Pumpkin seeds are going to be something I encourage everyone to add in, make sure that they're raw, organic and sprouted if possible. And I'll share with you my source in just a minute, but also just nuts um, are gonna be great. Now they're even saying dry roasted. Now, when you dry roast things, you actually denature them, but you're still getting some value. Again, if you're gonna get the maximum payload out of these, make sure you're getting them organic, raw and sprouted. Sprouting really releases a lot of those. And then beans, you hear me talk a ton about beans, pink beans, but black beans. Now that's not everything, but those are at the top of the list. So if you're getting those into your diet regularly, you're doing a good job of making sure that you are supplying yourself with the magnesium you need. Now, there's another mineral that I'm gonna point out that is really important testosterone really quickly, and that is going to be zinc. Now, here's the reason I point this out. Of course, we get all these oysters up at the top being the most, we got beef, which is great. Even though people are getting a lot of these uh, beef in their diet, they're still maybe low on zinc body's burning up a lot of zinc and magnesium in a lot of ways. But even down here, still in the top is pumpkin seeds again. So I bring this up because I want to give you tools that are going to give you cross-functional solutions that are going to give you a lot of different things. So not only are these pumpkin seeds giving you magnesium, they're also giving you zinc, they're giving you protein, they're giving you a little bit of fat and fiber and all these other micronutrients. So building this into a routine in your day where you just do a handful of these a day is going to do a lot for you. Here in the clinic, I always have a bowl of them sitting out. 
when I take my little break, I make sure I take a handful of those. But here's what I will show you. We do for everybody who comes in the clinic. One of the first things they get is one of these hand full size bags of organic sprouted pumpkin seeds from Go Raw. Now I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just sharing you with you what I personally use and why I think they're great. And they actually taste really good. Just two ingredients, sea salt and pumpkin seeds that are organic, raw and sprouted. So all of the things that I would want you to have, just a very simple way to just cross off a whole bunch of things on your list that could be keeping you from having maximum levels of testosterone. Now, two last things I wanna share with you. If you're trying to figure out the zinc piece, there is an interesting test that I share with everybody and you can actually order this for yourself and keep it at home. Again, every new client gets a bottle of this when they come to see me. It is a zinc taste test. So it's non-invasive oral test and you just can get a lot of information from just having this and testing yourself that we don't have to do a blood test. And finally, one last thing, if you are going to supplement, the value of what kind of magnesium you're getting is of absolute importance. A lot of people will go out and grab a bunch of cheap magnesium supplements and, and they're not very bioavailable. In fact, I do a whole course on this um, and I go through the, which ones are gonna be the least bioavailable. And I'll tell you this, that the whole food sources are always, 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 always best. People may argue with me about magnesium glycinate or they may argue me about magnesium threonate, but it's always going to be beat by a whole food source. And so one of the other habits that I've built into my life most nights, just to make sure that I am not going into a deficit over something as important as magnesium is I do supplement and take a couple before bed. And I'll show you what I take. It's a whole food source. It is a combination of just two foods. It's buckwheat and Swiss chard. And so when I do it this way, not only do I get magnesium, I also get potassium and phosphorus and iron and K1, a whole host of little micronutrients. And I love this uh, portion on the website where down here, I'm just gonna point out one more time, these studies that they're showing the plant-based magnesium outperforming all the other kinds. So add this to your checklist, make sure you're getting those foods in there regularly. And if you are doing things that are depleting it, like medications, alcohol, put more attention on getting it back there. It may be as simple as that, and you could have a profound increase in your testosterone. See you next week when we do more testosterone videos.